Hello, I'm Brooke Avery from Limble CMMS. And I'm Preston Lamb from Motive Health. Welcome, Welcome to, to Brooke, Brooke Avery, Avery and Preston, Preston Lamb Prevent Fun Run with, with Feature, feature flags. flags. Well, over the next 300 seconds, we are going to explore the dynamic world of feature vexillology. Hang on, Brooke. What is feature vexillology? Feature vexillology is the study of feature flags and programming. Cool. I think I just learned something. And did you have fun doing it? I'll say. Fun information and programming are all part of this presentation, not unlike this three-sided flag, also called a pennant. Hello, Mr. Tauntaun. In this talk, we'll answer some of your burning questions about feature flags, like, what are feature flags? What's the most important part of feature flags? What's the second most important part of feature flags? And more. Sweet. Wait, why are you waving a white flag? Because I'm surrendering to fun. <laughs> Let's start by defining feature flags. All right, Brooke, what are feature flags? I'm glad you asked, Preston. Feature flags are also known as feature toggles, feature bits, feature flippers, or as I like to call them, the triangular pendants of programming, another three-sided flag. They are a way to control the visibility and behavior of certain features in an application. So they allow you to selectively switch or toggle or turn certain features on and off. Some examples of things that they're useful for are things like testing unreleased features, AV experimenting on different app features, and granting access to only certain users, like admins. It's like having a flag that you can raise or lower depending on your needs, except that instead of being a two-sided, it's a three-sided flag. And that is where the triangular pennant of programming comes in. The triangular pennant of programming? That's right the three sides of a programming flag that include the feature flag service, the feature flag guard, and the feature flag directive. With these three tools, you can master the art of feature flagging and become a true feature vexillologist. All right, well, let's learn more about the three sides of triangular pendants of programming. If you take a look at this application that we're building for our friend Stuart at the comic book store, we've included feature flagging to switch a special ng-comp sale on and off. We simply added our service, guard, and directive to our code, and that gave us the ability to conditionally hide or display the sale. Let's look at the feature flag service first. Just like with real flags, the service is like the pole that supports the flag. It provides the backbone of your feature flag implementation, allowing you to create manage, and control your flags. The service is used to tell if a given feature is turned on or not. You simply add the feature flags to the service by either loading a JSON file or making an API call, and then you provide a method on the service that returns true or false based on the flag's value. Uh, just like a flag needs a pole to hold it up, your Angular application needs the feature flag service to support and manage its features. And again, with this service, you can easily and quickly enable or disable features based on specific conditions. Next, the feature flag guard is like the stitching on a flag that helps prevent the flag from fraying or tearing. The guard uses the service to dynamically control which code path is live, or in other words, it prevents users from getting to portions of the app that you want or need to be unavailable to them. With a guard, new routes are unavailable to users until the flag is switched on. If the flag is off, users can't navigate to those portions of the app, allowing deployment to still go on while your dev team continues to work on those new features. So the guard protects and maintains the integrity of the flag. You can see on Stuart's comic book site that users can see the main site but have no idea that there's actually a sales page. This is because the feature flag is turned off, so the route to the sales page is not available to them. 
Our final side to the triangular pendant of programming is the feature flag directive. The directive is like the masterful design that adorns a flag. It allows you to conditionally render UI elements based on the value of the feature flag. So, just like a flag's design displays meaning and purpose, the feature flag directive controls what UI elements will be displayed to the user based on the value of the flag. That's right. By simply adding a directive to your code, it's like a flag designer determining which colors and patterns will appear on the flag. So, if you're not sure how well users will like the design, for example, you, could, uh, you can use feature flags to roll out one design to some users and another design to other users, and then do some A-B testing and use data to determine which one to roll out for good. So with these three critical elements, the service, the guard, and the directive, you can successfully implement feature flags in your application. Looking again at Stuart's uh, comic book store website, you can see how the site uses these three parts of the triangular pendant of programming to conditionally display features like letting customers know when Stuart's NG comp sale is running or hide it when the sale is not on. That's right. Now, going back to our original questions, We've learned that feature flags are a way to selectively enable or disable certain features in your app based on configuration, making it easier to control, uh, the visit, yeah, to control feature visibility without significantly modifying the code base. The most important things to remember aside from the service, the guard, and the directive are that feature flags improve the UX UI of your app they also simplify testing and debugging by allowing developers to isolate specific features and toggle them on or off as needed. And lastly, they let you facilitate continuous deployment. Feature flags can enable teams to deploy code more often and more safely by allowing them to disable features that aren't ready for production or that might have bugs. And now, as we lower the flag on this feature, and in the words of our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, with great power comes great flagility. Bazinga! If you're interested in learning more about feature flags and how we implemented them into our comic book store app, you can go, on, uh, go and find our repo on GitHub, and then you can also read a great article that Preston here wrote about feature flags on the NG Champions blog on Medium but we'll have that all available on a QR code and you can get it there. Thanks.